Hello everyone and welcome to the Time Management Mastery Live training event. Great to be here with you. I am Andrew Logan and it's amazing to have, well, we've got Janice in here from Maori already. I was just about to say, amazing to have everyone in here from all around the world. Before we start, I'd love to know where you're tuning in from. Let us know where you're tuning in from all around the world and what time it is as well because for most of you, I'm sure it's Saturday afternoon or Saturday evening. For me here in Australia, it is 6 a.m. Sunday morning and it's actually Mother's Day morning. So a little bit of a husband error, like, I mean, massive husband fail really from my side, not realizing it was Mother's Day. Uh, yes, so Anne-Marie is coming in from northern New South Wales, Alberta, Canada, 2 p.m. Saturday, Indiana, uh, 9 p.m. for Cheston in the UK. Guys, Great to have you all in here and hopefully we can deliver uh, an incredible event. Yes, Australia is a very beautiful part of the world. Um, you know, I'd love to be here. I've been very blessed to travel the world, but we'll always live in Australia. But our time zones aren't always the best. So here we are bright and early on a Sunday morning talking about time management. So before I get into the actual time management training, I'd just love to know Who's new here? I mean, who's never heard me train an event? Who's never heard me speak or anything like that? Or who's been on all the other ones? Who's been on the, the breakthrough event? Who's been on the leadership training event? Who does the Freedom Friday lives with me? Who is brand new and who's been here for a little while? I'd love to know. Let me just shift that camera a little bit. I'd love to know who is brand, brand new because especially for the brand new people we've got. So Heidi, Heidi's a brand newbie. Uh, we've got some prizes and giveaways and we've been doing some raffles, spinning the wheel, doing all those sorts of things throughout the training. So especially if you're brand new, I would love to help you out with spinning the wheel and giving you some prizes and helping you on your pathway to financial freedom. So let's get stuck in, right? Oh, look, there's a lot of new people here. So Heidi's new, Markin's new, Deanna's new, Shinny's new. Anne Marie's new. Awesome. Great to have so many brand new people coming in for this training event. So let's get my trusty pen and markers out and my flip chart because I love to draw stuff out. So let's talk about time management. Yes, Helen, you've been for a while. IK, you've been, you've definitely been here from day one. Um, so let's talk about time management. Now, I would love to hear what are some of your challenges when it comes to time management, because time management is quite an umbrella term, really. So do you struggle with, you know, is it just finding the time in the day, knowing where to spend your time, balance? I mean, that's a massive one. OK, uh, obviously, you know, juggling the team and stuff like that. One of the greatest things about this business, one of the greatest things about this industry is working with a great team, working with a huge number of people is absolutely amazing. Um, but it also means that, you know, it can be a bit time consuming at times because there's lots of people coming to us for help. Heidi, there isn't enough hours in the day. Deanna, where to spend my time? Yeah, classic questions, classic challenges for people. So I'm going to cover all of those things today and I cover some things you probably haven't thought of as well. Uh, some things that maybe if you're kind of brand new and hustling, you haven't thought about yet, but they could be challenges down the road. And like anything, if we identify them now, uh, then they won't become a challenge later because we can identify them, nip them in the bud and make sure we don't fall into bad habits. Because I talked about it a lot in the leadership event. So if anyone did the Level Up Your Leadership event, talked about a lot at the end of the day is that our leadership essentially becomes a lid on our business. <laughs> Shiny object syndrome. Uh, yeah, a lot of people are guilty of that. So our leadership essentially becomes a lid on our business and we can only kind of rise to the level of our leadership skills. And as the team gets bigger, our leadership needs to be better. And it's one of the big misconceptions when people say, oh, well, as soon as I get a team, you know, I'll get better at leadership. And it's like, no, you have to get better at leadership. Otherwise, you can't build the team. You know, it's a chicken and egg scenario, but you definitely have to raise your leadership to raise the team. Now, it's the exact same thing with our time management skills is that your time management will be a lid on the size of the business you can grow. 
And we only rise to the level of our time management skills. And if anything, we kind of fall to our incompetence. Essentially, we fall to the level of our incompetence. We rise to the level of our skill, however you want to look at it, kind of positive or negative. The reality is your time management won't get better or easier, especially as the team gets bigger. You have to grow those skills and develop those skills. So yeah, easily distracted, Mark, easily distracted. Totally get what you're saying. So let's talk about some myth busting. I really want to do a lot of training today, but really talk about some of the time management mindset myth busting. So let's talk time management, right? So right off the bat, So, elephant in the room. Very first myth to bust, you cannot manage time. Time management is an incorrect term. We shouldn't use the term time management. Why? Because you can't manage time. You have 24 hours in a day and that is it. Now you have 24 hours a day, I have 24 hours a day, Everyone you know, successful people, unsuccessful people, happy people, unhappy people, they all, hey Anna, great to see you. They all have 24 hours in a day. So sometimes it's difficult for the universe to give us what we want because we don't, we don't actually have clarity on what we want. We're not entirely sure what we want. And so sometimes we're asking the universe for things that it can't give us. So if we're asking to be better with our time management, it's really hard for the universe to give us that because you can't change time. You can't manage the time that you have because that time is constant. So right off the bat, we've got to sort of ignore the mindset of time management. Hey, Gene. What we need to understand is it's what we do in the time that we have and how we prioritize our energy and focus. And definitely one of the big things I want to hit in this event is really helping you change that mindset from an employee to a business owner and moving from a network marketing job to a network marketing business. And again, we talked about it a lot in the leadership. There's a lot of parallels between leadership and you know, time management. We use time management because everyone understands the term. But the reality is it's about task prioritization. Now, those who know me as well, I didn't, I went through science, right? I went through med school. So (laughs) apologies for my handwriting. And I often like spell incorrectly too, because I, you know, I didn't do English, right? But here we are. It's task prioritization. You cannot change the time that you have, but you can change how you prioritize what you do each day. And that's what I really want to help you with. Myth number one, like elephant in the room, we need to stop thinking about time management and start thinking about task prioritization. How we show up each day, how we schedule ourselves, and how we schedule ourselves within our team. And so that's what I wanna hit straight away. So myth number one, there is no such thing as time management, but you can prioritize your tasks. So jumping straight in, how do we do that? Morning, Barry, hope you're doing well, mate. So how do we manage our tasks? So Eric Walray, you know, Eric Walray, the kind of, you know, the godfather, the OG of, training the network marketing industry and his original book in its original print GoPro. And I remember, you know, nine, 10 years ago reading that and I just, I learned so much from it. But one of the biggest things that I learned is looking at how we prioritize our tasks. And Eric in the book, and I'd love to ask him this face to face because I I don't know if this was on purpose or a lucky coincidence. But in the book, he goes through six skills of being a network marketing professional, okay? So first of all, we need to find people, network. 
Now you can call this attraction marketing. You can call this going out and meeting new people, new hairdresser, new owner. You can do it through, you know, social media attraction, branding, all that kind of stuff. You can give this different names, but the reality is we need to network. It's in the name of network marketing. So we network and then we market to them. So the very first step in network marketing is to network, find people to talk to. And then we talk to them, to people. Now this is essentially marketing, sharing our story, inviting people to have a look, offering them a solution to their problems, inviting them to our video, to watch the video, inviting them to the team Zoom, inviting them to the team group where there's more information. Again, you can call this whatever you like, but the reality is the very first two skills of being a network marketing professional are finding people to talk to and talking to the people that you find. Then skill number three is we need to support. We need to support the team. So we need to help our customers get results with our products. We need to help people launch their business. We need to help our business builders grow their business. We need to support people in the team. And one way to do that is to get to events and bring people to events. So Brian Carruthers, another sort of the OG on the you know network marketing books and network marketing trainers, he has his book, Building an Empire. And in that book, he says, I'm not in the network marketing business, I'm in the ticket selling business. My job is to sell tickets to events. I go to the event and I get people to the event, okay? So his job is to just get bums on seats. Now we say, you know, these days, obviously it's been a COVID world recently and it's like, well, you either get them in the, uh, in the room or you get them on the Zoom. The reality is we need to expose people to our company's culture, other people, the team, the network, all that kind of stuff. So the first four skills, let's find people to talk to, let's network, let's talk to the people we find, let's market, let's support them to get results because they're not going to keep ordering or they're not going to keep you know, showing up if they're not getting results, money, financial, physical, wealth, health, anything. And we need to get to events because it shows support, it shows culture, it shows results, all, and it's fun, right? All those exciting things. Now, skill number five. We need to build belief. So we need to build belief in ourselves. We need to build belief in our company, in our industry, in what we sell, in our compensation plan. One of the biggest challenges people have, and we're not going to talk about it today, I've, I've done lots of other training on it, but it's overcoming objections. One of the biggest challenges to objections is people don't believe what they're saying. People say, you know, buy this product. It's not actually that good, but you should buy it. And people pick up on that and say, well, no, I'm not going to buy it. It's not that good <laughs> because they, they feel that lack of belief. They don't feel that conviction and that energy in what you're saying. So we need to build belief. Now, one of the best ways to build belief is to get to events, right? So we get to events so that we can build belief in our company, especially in the compensation plan. We see results. We meet people. We change our environment and we grow ourselves. And that is skill number six is that we need to personally develop. We need to grow ourselves. Who knows that they need to personally develop along the journey. They need to go out and personally develop and grow themselves so that they can get better results. Now, personal development doesn't magically make everything simpler or sorry, it doesn't. Sorry, wrong words. Personal development doesn't magically give you results, but it does make everything easier. So it's a lot simpler to build your business when you grow yourself. Now, you don't get paid, obviously, to grow yourself. It's part of the journey. It's part of building belief. It's part of growing ourselves so that all of these other tasks are simpler. When we have belief in ourselves, when we have belief in our products, when we have belief in our industry, it is easier to go out and talk to people. When we have a stronger social media brand, when we're really 100% dialed in with who we are, it's easy to attract 
people. It's easier to find people to talk to, okay? So six skills of being a network marketing professional. Now, here is the key to all of this and the key when we talk about task prioritization right off the bat is that these six skills go into three separate groups. These are our income producing activities. And not only that, they are directly income producing activities. So skills one and two, find people to talk to and talk to the people we find are directly income producing. And I mean directly in that I can control it. I can control how many people I meet each week. I can control how many people I send a message to. I can control how many people I reach out to and offer, invite them to have a look, invite them to the group, invite them to watch the video. That is directly income producing because that is how we directly build our business. We find people to talk to and we talk to the people we find and we add people into our funnel, we add people into our group, we add people into our team. We directly grow our team through those two skills. The next two, these are indirectly income producing activities. So what do I mean by indirectly income producing activities? So supporting someone, setting up a business builder, getting them along to an event. I can control how many people I invite to the event. I can control how many people I invite to the Zoom. I can control the systems and tools that I have in the company, in the team where someone comes in and they watch this video and they get a script and they have a template and they have a, a, you know, a tool to use, all those sorts of things. I can control that. I can control inviting people to events. I can create my own event if there's not an event to, uh, if there's not an a, a event to invite them to. Slipping on my words here. But I can't control what they do after they've come to the event. So someone can come along and sit there and they see people walking across stage, they meet the company owners, they see the fireworks, they're amazing, right? And it's like huge, like overload almost, like, but they come out like, that was amazing, I loved it, it was, what an awesome weekend, and I got to meet that top income owner, I got to meet the company executive, I got to meet the CEO, and then they go home, and their partner says, oh, that thing's a scam. We're not doing it. I've cut your account. Like these things happen, right? We know, unfortunately, we can do all the work to get someone to an event and then they just fall off the face of the planet. They go into witness relocation program. And even with our products, we can help people. Again, we can have systems and tools so that they get incredible results with their health, with their energy, with their sleep, with their skin, with, you know, like, our amazing products help them do amazing things. And then they say, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. And they go back to their old habits. They go back to eating poorly. They go back to living off caffeine. They go back to a cheaper skin regime that causes breakouts and stuff like that. We can't control what they decide to do. We can lead a human to knowledge, but we can't make them think. Right, And we can show them the door, but we can't get them to walk through. And if we push them through, they're going to push back. So our job is to show people the door and keep inviting, keep inviting, keep inviting. But we can't control what they do after that. So supporting people and bringing them to the events, that's not a direct income producing activity. Now, yes, your amazing leaders are going to come out of it. Your incredible customers who buy every month for the rest of their life are going to come out of it. But we never know who they are and we can't control who they are. So you have directly income producing activities and indirectly income producing activities. Then down the bottom, we have our non-income producing activities. So this is where I've said, I, I don't know if like, I mean, I don't know if Eric meant this on purpose or it was a lucky coincidence and I want to ask him to his face. But the reality is the priority is the top, then here, then here. 
Because personal development is incredibly important. As I said, building belief is incredibly important, but we do not get paid for it. We do not get paid to read the books. We do not get paid to listen to the videos. We do not get paid to plug into the podcast. We don't get paid to attend the events. We actually pay to attend the events, right? So as much as building belief and growing ourselves are important, what we have to remember from a task prioritization point of view is that they are the least most important thing when it comes to building a business. Now, again, a lot of what we're going to talk about is moving from an employee job mindset to a business building mindset. And in jobs, you get paid by the hour. You're told to show up for these many hours and do these things. In business, you get paid on volume. You get paid on results. You get paid on what you produce. So unfortunately, your company owner isn't going to ring you tomorrow morning and say, hey, I heard over the weekend you watched Andrew's video. Here's another $50. Your company owner isn't going to say, hey, I see you've been listening to a lot of podcasts lately. Here's $50. They're going to say, hey, I saw you sold some product. So you get a commission in your bank account. But personal development and building belief do not bring money into our bank account. So if we want to have a business, we need to focus on producing results first and then we work on ourselves afterwards. I'm not saying they're not equally important. I'm just saying we have to prioritize business activities if we want a business. So the very first step in time management is getting rid of that mindset and saying, you know what, I'm not going to worry about managing time. I'm going to focus on the pro and prioritize the tasks that build my business. Now, if I'm a little bit messy, that's okay. If my social media brand is a little bit rough, that's okay. You know, if I have a few failures, you know what, that's okay. Because I know that if I get into the habit of putting personal development first, then we become like that person that just, you know, they've read every single book, they've watched every single video, but they've never opened their mouth. And the beautiful word is perfectionism, but the reality is they're procrastinating. So it's kind of like having a left leg and a right leg, right? Which is most important? Well, both. It's important to do these and it's important to do these. But if all you do is just personal development, it's like you're just walking with one leg, right? And you just walk around in a circle and your business never gets anywhere. Now, it's also the same if all you do is go out there and just talk to people, talk to people, talk to people, but you're a bit of a mess and, and you never work on building your belief. You never work on refining your script. You never work on, you know, actually supporting people and all that kind of stuff. It's you just walk around the other way. OK, you just walk around in circles and your business doesn't grow. It doesn't move. But if you find people, talk to them and then come home and learn from the mistakes and develop. And then find people, talk to them, support your people, and then come home and learn from your mistakes and get better. You will walk down the road towards your financial freedom. But what we have to understand is that this prioritization is how you become a business owner. So first myth, do not talk about time management, talk about task prioritization. Has that helped anyone? Has that been a light bulb moment for anyone yet? Let me know where you're going because I want to really focus in, especially now, task number three, because this is the most difficult one when it comes to prioritization. So we're going to, we're going to focus on that. But let me know if that's been a light bulb moment for you. Let me know if that's helped right off the bat. Just help get a clearer picture of what you want to do. Anna, yes, super helpful. Awesome. Anna, because you were the first person to say that, I'm going to spin the wheel for you. So, Anna, well, hang on, you've already got this prize. So I'm going to, Anna, you've, you've got most of our prizes. You know what, Anna? I can't spin the wheel for you because you already have most of the prizes, but I'm going to send you a very special gift anyway. I'm going to send you my favorite all-time book 
on this business. And it's a book that most people have never heard of. I even spoke to some trainers the other day and they'd never even heard of it. But I'm going to send it to you for jumping up and volunteering there and being first to go there. Everyone's always looking for someone else to go first, right? That's a leadership thing. So Anna, I'm going to send you a gift in the mail very, very soon. But yes, Deanna, yes, Helen, Emery, that's awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Walking in one leg, yeah. Now, so very quickly, the walking in one leg, I must say, I didn't come up with that. Uh, I, uh, I, well, a mentor of mine, someone when I first joined this business, Michael was his name. He taught me a lot. Okay. I, I, I mean, we hadn't, we didn't meet for five or six years. I eventually met him, which was really awesome when we become friends, but he was an author. He was a speaker. I read all his books, listened to all his training. And that was a big one I learned from him. Now, the funny thing is, is that I trained that in an event once uh, when I was speaking for Fraser Brooks at his event and he loved it and he stole it. And now I know Fraser's even done it on Eric Warray's stage. And everyone's like, oh my goodness, that's Fraser Brooks. But we both, yeah, yeah. Well, so, so I okay, go saying Fraser taught you that. We both stole it. So I'm just going to put it out there that neither of us can claim it. And Fraser will admit that he stole it. He saw it from me and was like, that was awesome. I'm like, well, I actually stole it as well. So we both stole it from a guy called Michael. So Michael, Michael Klaus was the guy, an absolutely incredible trainer, um, 40 years of experience in this uh, industry. So incredible. All right. Let's talk about supporting the team because this is one of the biggest challenges when it comes to building your business. Who feels that they are overwhelmed by the people in their team? Like it's just you wake up and it's just notification, 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 notification. Like who feels that just like it's just like like my head explodes every morning, uh, every morning because my phone is just full. And anytime I start to actually get a little bit of momentum going, my phone messages and like I lose that momentum again. Does anyone else feel like that? Yeah, Emery, yep, <laughs> Anna, I wish. So if you missed the leadership training event I did, I, I go into this area in a lot of depth. Okay, I go into this, so I'm going to go through it quickly because I don't want to waste everyone's time today like going over stuff that we trained just recently. I'll go through it in an overview. If this is a struggle for you, go back and watch my leadership training event. I've just loaded it up onto the YouTube channel recently. So it's Leverage to Legacy is the YouTube channel. It's up there. Or if you scroll through the Facebook group, if you scroll through the Facebook page, you'll be able to find the replay of the event as well and you can watch it on there. But our team is going to look like a little bit of a funnel. Okay. Now we all know this little, you know, in everything we do, it's all going to sort of funnel down into a small amount of people at the end of the day. So you think about all the people you went to school with. Now you're going to have people that you went to school with and you had really nothing to do with them outside of the fact that you are wearing the same uniform each day and attending the same classes. You never really spoke to them. Then you're going to have the people that you do a few classes with, you connect, you have the people that you have lunch with every day, and then you're going to have your absolute two or three best friends and 20 years later, you're still best friends, right? When you go to work, you're going to have people that you work with, you're going to have people that you sort of, you know, acknowledge and talk to, you're going to have people that you hang out and have lunch with, and then you're going to have people that you hang out with on the weekend and do all those, you know, do all those great social stuff, even though you work together, you're going to spend time on the weekend together as well. Now, I might just draw this a little bit bigger so we've got a bit more room. So your team is going to be the same, right? You are going to have a large number of your people and it's about 80% that from a business point of view, not interested. Okay. That doesn't mean they don't love your products. That doesn't mean they're not great customers. That doesn't mean they don't love you or support you. They're just not interested in your in building a business for themselves. They're just not interested in creating volume, right? That is going to be about 80% of your team. Then we've got this 20% left over. So we're going to have about 15% that will dabble. 
you know, they're going to tell a few people, they're going to tell it, you know, they might tell their mom, their sister, they might tell the odd person here and there. They're going to dabble, right? They're going to bring in a few people. They're going to maybe get on the Zooms. They maybe go to the events, but they're not going to be like reading books. They're not going to be getting up at 6 a.m. on a Sunday morning to watch a training event or anything like that. They'll bring in people if they ask, but they're not interested in ever really making more than a little bit of part-time income, right? And again, this is nothing about who they are as a person. This is just their business activity. And this, especially while we're here, this is nothing to do with what they tell you when they join. A lot of people up here, I'm going to be your greatest business builder ever. Okay. And then they never did anything. They're like, watch me. And I'm like, okay. And I watched them and they did nothing, right? It's just, it's just human nature, right? This is everything we do. Now, down the bottom, we're going to have about 4% who are active. You know, these people are actively showing up at events. They're actively on the calls. They're actively out there, like working on their social media brand, doing all these things. They're really, really growing their business. And then we have these little unicorns down the bottom who are our leaders. All right. And all of this fits into the 80 20 rule, the Pareto principle. Now, everything in life really falls into this kind of mindset. This is, again, this is nothing to do with your company, product, opportunity, anything. This is human nature. You do a reel on your social media, 80% of it, just view it and then scroll. You know, 15% will actually interact, maybe drop a like. 4% will watch it a few times, drop a like and a comment. And, you know, like 1% will slide into your DMs and say, okay, tell me more. I want to follow you. What are you doing? Right? So, here is the reality. And again, this is a business decision. This is something that people like a trap that people fall into. 80% of our people are up here. So the mindset is 80% of my time needs to be here. And it's the exact opposite. This down here, especially here, 95% of your volume is coming from oh, from the 5% of people at the bottom of the funnel. And again, this is human nature, right? Remember how they say 95, like 95% 95 of the world's wealth is held by 5% of people and 99% of the wealth is held by the top 1%? Because there's only one in 100 will ever get into the top 1%. This is a human nature thing, right? But if we talk about being a business owner, a business builder, having a business mindset, we need to make a business decision on who we prioritize. Now, I'm not saying that the people up here aren't important. You could have customers who spend $1,000 a month every month for their whole life up here, and they could be some of your best friends, and they're very important into your life. You could have great people in here as well. But from a business point of view, when you are working your business and you're at step number three, you've gone out and you've done your networking, you've done your marketing, and then you're at step number three, you need to spend 95% of your time here and then here and then here. Now, if you're feeling overwhelmed, that is a choice to spend your time with the wrong people. And again, I'm not saying wrong as in that there's anything wrong with the people. I'm saying it is a business decision who you prioritize your time with. And you need to have the self-discipline to say, you know what? I need to prioritize the leaders because they're making this a priority. People who make building a business a priority need to be your priority. But we tend to do it the other way around. We tend to say, you know what? These people need me. And again, any nurturers out there, any, you know, like blue personalities, nurturers, like you, you, you guys, like you, I mean, it's all, you know, it's all about the emotions. It's all about the relationships. It's all about, you know, culture and that. And you guys are the glue that hold things together. But you can also overwhelm yourself because everyone's going to start coming to you with their problems. Oh, I don't like the taste of the products. Oh, I, I don't know. What do I do here? What, like, when do I take this? When do I do that? Now, if you don't have systems and tools in place for these guys, then again, you are making a decision to be overwhelmed because you are going to get completely consumed with spending all of your day taking care of these people. You need to make the decision 
to prioritize your business builders first. Now these guys, yes, they're pretty independent. Yes, they generally know what to do, but you still need to make the decision to spend more time with them than you do with the people here and here. Now, again, that doesn't mean that someone here had, you know, they don't know what to do with the product, they're not sure, but you know what, I'm gonna get to them after I've gotten to these people. In the same way that I'm not saying personal development isn't important, but I get to personal development after I've done everything else. And that's the discipline of having a business, okay? That is the discipline of saying, you know what, I need to do income producing activities with income producing people. I need to spend my the time doing the right tasks with the right people. Because if I don't, I have an overwhelming network marketing job. And a network marketing job is great because you get to choose your uniform, you get to choose your hours, you get to choose where you work, but you'll never get the freedom that you want because your time will be totally consumed by other people. You'll get totally consumed having other people come and take your time. So if you want to move from a business to see, uh, a, a job to a business, you need to focus on prioritizing tasks and prioritizing the people who prioritize tasks. Now, if you can do that, you will have great success. Work with the willing. Yeah, it's about working with the willing. Now, how do we identify those people? Now, again, like if, if um, and I, I go through this a lot in the leadership training, but essentially get, test them, test people with a task. One of the simplest things we used to do, Andrew and I, we just send people like people would say, I'm interested in building a business. And we'd send them a, a piece of paper, basically like an email with like five questions, you know, what do you, what's your goal? What do you want to earn? How long, you know, how many hours a day, how many hours a week are you willing to, to put into this? What do you think are some of your skills and what are some of your hurdles? And if you like, once you've filled out those five questions, book a Zoom call with us and we'll talk through them. So set a goal, actually have an income, let us know what you're willing to sort of dedicate and sacrifice, where are you, where are you strong, what can we work on and where are the hurdles, what are some of the weaknesses? 80% of people never even responded to that message. 80% of people just like, oh, like not interested. What I've got to, I want to make a million dollars, but I've got to answer five questions. Are you kidding? Out, right? And it's, it's, a, you know, it's a horrible shame, but hey, they could still be product users. They could still be consumers. They could still be customers, all that kind of stuff. But if you want to have a business, you need to make business decisions with who you spend time with. Now, once you're stopped working, you know, once you're like, all right, that's my, it's 2 p.m. and I've done all my work for the day and your best friend is up in here, go out and spend two hours with your best friend doing a, a joy producing activity, okay? But when we're doing income producing activities, it needs to be with income producing people. You can have joy producing activities and you can have personal growth producing activities and then you have everything else, okay? But when you're doing income producing activities, it needs to be with income producing people. If you can't do that, you will overwhelm yourself. So coming back to here, we find people, we talk to them. And then when we get into the support, we actually work kind of the other way upside down the funnel. So in this one, we work our way down the list. On the funnel, we work our way up the list, okay? So we just need to flip it there for the one task. But this support is the difference between moving from something that's good and moving into something that's great. And one of the things about having a great life is that you have to be willing to give up a good life to get into a great life. Now, I spoke to a guy once who climbed Mount Everest. And when they were on that final ascent, you know, they're in that sort of final base camp um, before the final ascent. And they were told, go through your luggage, go through your backpack and get rid of everything that you don't need. And he even snapped his toothbrush in half to save weight. And he said, you cannot take everything with you to the top. And I'll always remember those words that he said, you cannot take everything with you to the top. And it was like, you know what? It's the same thing. Unfortunately, we can't take everyone with us to the top. And we can't carry 
people with us to the top, okay? You can't get to the top of Mount Everest with someone on your shoulders, right? But if you want to get to the top, if you want that view, you need to make decisions on who you're working with. So that's big lesson number two, okay? Make sure that we're not falling into the trap of overwhelming ourselves and being a people pleaser. So I talk about like the three P's that will kill your business. If you're a perfectionist or a procrastinator and you're getting so caught up in personal development, you will just walk around in circles because you'll never open your mouth. Don't get caught up in perfectionism or procrastination, guys. It, like, do not, please do not. And also, we need to be so aware of being a people pleaser. And if you got, like, if, if you want to please people, then, you know, like become pizza, like find a way to turn yourself into a pizza. But even then, and I, I was doing a training just the other day, like Friday nights in our house is family movie night and pizza, you know, end of the school week. And we sit down with the kids and let's, you know, let's have some pizza and pick a movie. There's four of us, my wife, myself, and the two kids, right? It takes like an hour to choose a movie that we'll all like. And there's four of us and we have to order three different pizzas because everyone's got different taste. Now, if we tried to people please and like, let's just get one pizza that pleases everyone, we'd never get anywhere, even just organizing a pizza, right? So imagine trying to have a team of a hundred people and you're trying to keep them all 100% happy and please them. You just can't do it. But you're not responsible for their happiness. You're responsible for helping them reach their goals. That's a leadership decision. That's a business decision. So is this helping? Are you get, like, is this helping? Like, you know, just you're getting those. I, I always like to talk about like the big jigsaw puzzle piece. And if we can get, you know, you, you know how you get a couple of pieces and then all of a sudden a whole new section of the picture opens up and you get those couple of pieces fall in place. And then all of a sudden a whole new section of the picture maps out and you can suddenly add in like another 10, 20 pieces. So when we talk about financial freedom as a big picture, you know, you see on the box, you know, you buy, you buy the jigsaw puzzle, here's what it looks like, here's financial freedom, and then you open it and it's like 10,000 puzzle pieces and some of them are upside down and, and it's like, whoa, hang on, like, like, <laughs> okay, like, yeah, whoa, like, so that's, you know, <laughs> that's what this can be like, but right, like we sit there like, oh yes, financial freedom all of a sudden and then people are like, okay, so you've got to, build a brand, you've got to talk to people, you've got to do this, you've got to do this, you've got to do this. And we can, it can be like, it's it's a dark night, it's a dark misty night and you're in the forest and you've got someone screaming, attraction marketing, talk to people, find new people, grow yourself, listen to this podcast, watch this video. And you're in the dark forest, just like running around tripping over things, okay? So, you know, what we just need to do is always remember like overwhelm is a choice. So if, over, if you're feeling overwhelmed, you need to sit there and say, actually, you know what? How am I treating my attention and my focus? Our time and our focus are two of the most precious things in the world. You have to be so aware of how you are using your time and focus. So Regina says, yes, thank you. And she was the first person to jump in and say yes. So Gina, I want to give you a prize. Oh, our VIP group. So you've got one month of free training in our VIP group. So after this event, if you can email me, so if you can email me, there it is, andrew at andrewlogan.net and say, I won the VIP group for the time management training. Remind me, right? Because I might forget. If you can email me and tell me that, I will send you the link to join our VIP group. Uh, and then you can get some extra, you know, like VIP training over the coming month. So yes, Regina, you deserve that. All right. Let's talk about balance. This is one of my favorite topics when it comes to time management. Who here is always like, you know, how can I get, I need more balance in my life. Like if, if I could get more balance, if everything could kind of, you know, work out and I'm more balanced, things will be simpler. Things will be cleaner. Things will be easier. Who here is looking for balance in their day? Okay, is cool. Just one person. 
I'm sure more, here we go, here we go. There is a delay, because I'm using StreamYard just because it's cleaner and you get nicer recordings. There is a delay between what I say and uh, you know it actually coming on the live stream. There's about a 10 second delay. So there's always, here we go, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, balance, balance, yeah, yeah, big one, right? Absolutely more balance, me, 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 yes. Okay, all right. Cheston, you struggle with this. Okay, so you can't see me, okay? You can only see the top half of my body, but Right now, maybe you can, if I can lift my leg high enough, I am standing on one leg, okay? I am balanced. Now this works a lot better on a physical stage, right? Because you can see my whole body. But at this moment in time, I am perfectly balanced. Now what's the problem? I'm not moving. Because I'm perfectly balanced, I'm not moving anywhere. So we talk earlier about sometimes the universe can't give us what we want because we're asking for conflicting things. So if you're looking for balance, you're looking for staying still. You're looking for everything to be in equilibrium. If I want to move in one direction, I need to unbalance myself. So here's one of the biggest myth busts. And this is why I love to talk about this topic because again, I just, I, I think so many people like actually make, you know, they, they actually kind of like shoot themselves in the foot a little bit because we're asking for certain things that aren't actually gonna help us grow our business. So if I'm balanced, I'm not gonna move my life in any direction. If I'm saying, you know what, I want my life to be balanced, I'm also saying, Please keep everything exactly as it is. Now, if you want to build your business and change your life, you're going to have to be unbalanced. Now, it's the same way as if you want to lose weight. Okay. Now, if you want to lose weight, you know, if someone says just eat a balanced diet, don't listen to them. Okay. So it's like, well, just eat a balanced diet. Well, a balanced diet means eat well Monday to sort of Friday lunchtime and then have pizza and a movie with the kids on Friday night, have a few drinks on a Saturday and enjoy balance, right? If I'm, if my diet is balanced, my body will stay exactly the same. Now, if I'm happy with my current body, I can enjoy a balanced diet. But yeah, you want to lose weight as well, Anna. So time management and losing weight, right? But the reality is like, if I want to enjoy, like if I'm happy right here, then I can enjoy a balanced life. And I can say, you know what, I'm gonna train four times a week, but I'm gonna enjoy the sleep in the other few mornings, just let my body recover, you know, do all those sorts of things. And you know what, took, took the kids to the movies the other day, and I'm gonna enjoy eating some popcorn with the movies at, them, uh, at the movies with them. But if I want to lose weight, if I say, you know what, it's time to trim down, okay, I mean, it's winter in Australia, but let's say it's spring and summer's coming and I need to just, trim those few kilos, I need to live an unbalanced life. I need to say, you know what, actually you need to set your alarm and get up and go to the gym four to five times a week instead of three. You need to stop having pizza on a Friday night with the kids. You need to not eat popcorn at the movies with them for a period of time until you move into the new weight category. If you want to get fitter, you want to say, you know what, I'm going to set the goal of running a marathon. You need to live an unbalanced life. You need to sit there and say, okay, I'm going to get up and run 30 kilometers in the morning. I'm going to set my alarm. I'm going to have a training schedule, a nutrition schedule, a recovery schedule, all those sorts of things. Okay. So if we want to move our business forward, we need to have an unbalanced life for a period of time. The great thing about this industry and the great thing about earning an extra income so that we can then put our money to work. And you know, what I preach is as much as I can, wherever I can build your business and then put your money to work. And then once your money has a job and your business is taken care of, cause you've got good time management skills and good leadership skills and you've mentored people, and then you've put your money to work and it's investing and you're creating those wealth loops, all those things I train in my book and on my videos and all that kind of stuff. Then you get to live a totally unbalanced life the other way. So if I lose weight, you know, I go here and then I get to a point and it's like, all right, I'm happy. Yep. 
And then I unbalance the other way. I say, okay, I'm going to eat pizza every night now because I'm ripped and I've got six packs so I can just eat pizza every night. What do I do? I just unbalance the other way until I come back to where I was. But network marketing, passive income, residual income is different. It's like this is where we have something that's totally different to everyone else where we can unbalance a certain way for a little bit and then when we come back, we get to live this unbalanced life potentially forever. As long as we don't go like totally crazy and fall over and, you know, completely blow our money. Okay. You know, don't, but the reality is you can lead an unbalanced life for the rest of your life. If you're willing to lead an unbalanced life the other way for a short period of time, the problem is we tend to, you know what? I worked really hard Monday to Friday, so I'm going to enjoy the weekend. You know what? It's been a big month. I need to take a week off. You know what? I went to that event and I'm a bit burnt out. And we just, like the metronome, flip back and forth and we end up back in the same spot in another year. And it's really unfortunate. What we need to do is lead an unbalanced life for a period of time so we can lead a totally unbalanced life the other way for the rest of our life. And no other industry, no other vehicle, nothing else offers that in the way that we do. That's what's so incredible about what we do. And that's why I'm so passionate about really helping people not just build their business, but put their money to work, use this extra income that you've got and actually learn how to put it to work so that we're not just like, hey, I made $1,000, let's go upgrade the car. How many network marketers do that? How many people do we see? Like they got the big bonus check and then they just went and had a holiday and then they're kind of back here. And they got the big, you know, again, they had a really good month. So then they went and upgraded the car. I've seen people have like, hey, I had a great week. So I went out and bought a car. And I'm just thinking like, oh, my goodness. Like if your car's about to die, sure, totally. But this was just like, oh, I just, you know, upgraded to my dream car after one good week. And it's like, oh, no, like we need to live unbalanced, sustained period of time, put our money to work, make those sacrifices, be consistent. And then we can enjoy the rest of our life financially free. So when we started 10 years ago, you know, when we started in this business 10 years ago, coming right up in like two weeks will be 10 years. You know, we didn't have a lot of spare time and I was running a business. Okay. So I was, you know, working full time, running a business. I was also traveling with teams. And I mean, that was nice to travel with teams, but the reality was I was always on planes and flights and all over the place. We were homeschooling our daughter. Angie was working full time as well. Um, and then she fell pregnant. So it wasn't like we were sort of twiddling our thumbs, looking up like, hey, like we got all the time in the world to build a business as well. But we knew that we needed to unbalance our life for a period of time if we wanted to change. Otherwise, we would just stay in the same place for the next 40 years. And I would work and she would work and we'd also raise two kids, you know, as, <laughs> as well as we could as parents. So we sat down and we said, you know what, what are we willing to give up out of a good life in order to get a great life? And that's the question you need to ask. If you, if you take one thing from this training, I want you to sit at home tonight and say, what am I willing to give up that's good in order to get what's great? And so for me, it was, you know what, like I trained five, six times a week. You know what, maybe you only need to train two or three times a week. Now, did that mean I was a little bit out of shape? Did that mean I was a little bit softer through than the middle than ideal? Yeah. But I was willing to give up that in the short term to be able to change my life in the long term. Now, once we sort of, you know, built our business, I was able to sell my traditional business. We were financially free. Then I was able to go and spend two or three hours a day at the gym. And I actually, you know, I started like entering con like. Um, like CrossFit, I do a lot of CrossFit. So, you know, entering like local CrossFit comps and doing quite well and, you know, winning stuff. And it was because I was able to completely unbalance the other way. There was no way I was working and winning CrossFit comps, but I didn't have to work anymore. And I was able to set up my day and schedule my day where I could go and spend an unbalanced time at the gym afterwards so that then I could enjoy all of those things. But we had to give up the good in the short term to be able to enjoy the great in the long term. And again, I talk about this all the time. You know, this is why like a financial plan is so important along with your business, because you want to hit certain ranks. You want to earn a little bit of money. But the second people earn money, they they raise their lifestyle. 
And again, they just like, they just wiggle back and forth. You need to make some, some, like if you want to invest and you want to really put your money to work and you want to create a total financial freedom plan, you need to be willing to give up some of the good things in order to have the great things. And so what that means is, you know what, I'm not going to upgrade the car immediately. I'm just going to start putting my money, like let it build up, let it save. And then one day you can go in and buy the dream car and not even have to blink. Okay. So it's not about like people like, don't be a wet blanket. You know, I earned this money. I want to enjoy it. I want you to enjoy it even more. I want you to dream even bigger. I want you to say, you know what, rather than just kind of upgrading the car, I'm going to just give up the good for a little bit. And then I'm going to go buy the, the dream car, that poster car, the car that I've always wanted. And I can walk in there and I can pay cash and it doesn't crush our life or cause me not to be able to sleep or anything like that. Okay. I mean, we are incredibly blessed to live in this total dream house and, you know, we, we just have the most incredible view off our deck and all that kind of stuff. And I remember, you know, we lived, you know, in very simple house for a number of years and we were earning really, really, really good, you know, seven figure income. We we're investing it heavily, all that kind of stuff. And people are like, when are you going to upgrade the house? And it's like, we'll do it. So when we found this house and we walked in and it was like, yep, done, buying it. And there was just no, like, we didn't have to stress. We didn't have to worry. We didn't have to panic or anything like that. We were able to buy just the most incredible dream house because we were willing to give up the good in order to go get the great. So here's your homework, right? What do you want to achieve? What do you want to achieve with your business? Okay. And even more importantly, why? Why do you want to achieve it? So for us, what did you want to achieve? We wanted to achieve $500 a week. Like it's, it's crazy to think where we are now because it was all about earning $500 a week. Why? Because $500 a week meant Angie could stay at home when Jack was born. And we wouldn't have to worry about, you know what, we need you to go back to work. Like how much longer have you got of maternity leave? So, it, you know, it wasn't the $500 a week. It was that Angie can stay home. Helen. Yeah. Love it. Pay a car for cash. Pay cash for a car. Sorry. Um, so why? Why do you want to do that? Okay. Now, how? How are you going to get there? If you don't know how, there's, you know, there's, there's a lot of resources out there. Okay. Um, you know, I've, I've done a lot of videos. I've got a book. Like, I can help you. There's a lot of great trainers out there who can help you, right? Find someone who can help you with the how. Find a mentor, find a coach, find a system, find a tool, all that kind of stuff. But you need to know how. So what do you want to achieve? Why and how? Okay. Now, what am I willing to give up? What will I give up to get there? Is it date night? Angie and I, date night was always important. But you know what? Actually, date night will just be something that doesn't cost money. And again, that was one of the decisions of, you know what? Let's just make date night like where we just go and do like a picnic on the beach instead of going out to a restaurant. Let's just make date night where we go for a walk on the beach and sunset rather than watching a movie. And those $50 better choices, $50 here, $50 here, $50 here, those better choices meant we could buy more books, we could buy more courses, we could attend more events, we could grow our business, we could accelerate, we could put that money to work, then we could buy more houses, we could buy more property, we could, you know, and by not upgrading our car, we could buy four or five more investment properties instead of buying a car, right? And that, you know, that snowball effect happened. But it was what do you want to achieve? Why? How are you going to get there? So make sure you have a roadmap, a plan, all that kind of stuff. And what am I willing to give up? We do need to make some sacrifices on the way to the top. If you just strive for balance, you will not get anywhere. And that's unfortunate. But you are saying to the universe, please keep me exactly still. You have to openly go out there and say, you know what? I am going to be unbalanced for a period of time. Okay. So that's the balance myth. So we've talked about the time management myth. Okay. Talked about making sure that we're task prioritization. We've talked about, you know, the people pleasing uh, myth and how that will get us in trouble and how like this is a business decision. We need to make 
business decisions. Um, and then we talk about balance myth. So this is how we move from an employee to a business owner. This is how we avoid some of the common traps that people make. Okay. Some of the common traps of the people strive for balance and especially financially they strive for balance. And it's like, as soon as I made money, I've got to spend it, you know, like, and I've got to spend money to show people how much money I'm making. And, you know, I, I did a podcast episode just on it the other day. One of the, if you want to get financial freedom, you have to be willing to kind of live poor for a while because you're putting all your money to work. You're going out and sending all your money to work instead of spending it. But we're so like, we're so keen to like, hey, everyone, let's like, look how much money I'm making that we want to live better, but we actually have to live like a little bit worse for a while. And if we live a little bit worse, we can actually create an amazing, amazing life. So Helen... Uh, because you popped up there with your dream to pay cash for a car. So I want to give you a price. And Helen is always on the videos, always on the supporting. You want a mentoring call. Um, always supporting everything. So Helen, if you can email me and we will do a free 30-minute mentoring call, you and me. So again, andrew at andrewlogan.net. Uh, and I will, oh, hang on, wrong button. Uh, and I will do that for you. Okay, last couple of things as we come to the end of the training today. So how do we schedule the day? How do we schedule the day? Now, I can't give you a schedule. I remember, <laughs> and I still remember this. I remember a girl, um, she was a very successful young girl, and, and she was, you know, really rocketing up the ranks in, in our company and, and doing really well. And they had her train on stage about time management. And she went out there and she showed everyone her diary. And it was like, you know, purple's yoga and, and green is connecting and blue is personal development. And it was all very pretty colors. And I remember just thinking like, oh, um, like I, I don't have time for yoga. <laughs> like, How can I schedule in yoga every day? I mean, I'm, you know, I'm married with two kids and, and you're a single, you know, like, like, um, how do we do that? And then talk to other people. And my brother, my brother's like a night shift worker and he's wanting to build his business, but he's a night shift worker. And he's like, well, you know, that doesn't make sense to me, right? So I can't give you a schedule. A lot of people are like, you know, let's, yeah. Okay, so I was, yeah. We, you need to make your own routine, right? The key is that you need to make your routine and understand that this is about building in the pockets of your life. One of the best things we talk about in this business is you can build this in the pockets of your life. But again, what we have to make sure is that we prioritize those pockets. So if you have kids like us, you know, we get up, we get the kids to school by 9am, the house is free. The very first thing we need to do is prioritize the very important tasks. What are the important tasks? finding people to talk to and talking to people we find, you know, content creation. If you're in attraction marketing, you know, going out and reaching out to people, you know, action, you know, reaching out and connecting with people in groups. If you're doing more a, a sort of, you know, like a, uh, like a traditional networking sort of setup, however you do it, it's up to you. They, they both work, right? It's just up to you which you prefer, but in the pockets of your day, you need to schedule. Now here's the really, really important thing is that, when you talk about, and again, this is a business owner's like language and, and stuff. When you say, I'm going to go work on my business, you know, I'm going to go in and fill this pocket of my day. What you need to say is I'm going to do this task, you know, whatever it is. You don't say I'm going to spend one hour on my business because Employee mindset is about how long do you do something for. Business owner mindset is what do you achieve? What do you produce? What do you actually finish? Now, there's a law, and I, I did my podcast just this this just this episode, um, this this most recent episode, what three days ago. I did this this exact topic here, right? So it's called Parkinson's law. So Parkinson's law, and I will answer your question in a sec, just if you're wondering. Yep. So Parkinson's law is that a task will take exactly as long as you give it. Okay. So who remembers when you're at school, and we all did this, you get an assignment at the start of 
term, the start of semester, the start of the year, and you do it the night before it's due. Now, that task took exactly as long as you gave it. You gave yourself all semester. It only physically took you six hours the night before to do it, but you gave yourself the whole semester. In theory, you could have done it six hours that first night. You could have come home and just like, okay, yep, done. Like done, and it's out of the way, right? But you gave yourself the whole semester because the teacher said this is a semester long assignment, the task took exactly as long as you gave it. And we all, I mean, I, I certainly did it. I did it at university as well. The other one I used to do, I used to do this a lot, um, you know, in my early working days when I was ill-disciplined. In my early working days, you know, you'd have your morning routine. Alarm goes off at seven, up, shower, dress, breakfast, in the car by 7.30. And, you know, you are at work. And for me, I'm at work treating patients by eight. So I needed to be at work by kind of 10 to eight so that I could just, you know, check, log in, all that kind of stuff, get set up, and then be treating that first patient by 8 a.m. Now, every now and then, you would like wake up at six uh, for whatever reason. A bird would, you know, crow, a dog would bark. We live near the beach, so sometimes, you know, the no excuse me, a storm, the noise of the beach, all that kind of stuff, you'd wake up like at six. And so now you're like, well, oh, I've got an hour and 20 to get ready. I've got an hour and a half to get ready. I'm going to have a really nice hot shower. I'm going to have a really long shower. And then actually I'm going to like just sit down and watch a bit of TV. And then rather than just kind of hoofing down some cereal, I'm going to like actually sit there and cook a really nice breakfast. And then all of a sudden I'm running late. All of a sudden somehow something that I could do in 20 minutes every morning over and over again took me an hour and a half and I was running late for work because I gave myself a whole length of time to do it. So when we talk about this task, what do I mean is like, what is the most important thing I need to do today? What is this task? So this task could be networking. This task could be following up. This task could be, you know, reaching out. This task could be inviting people to the next event, all that kind of stuff. And what we need to say is, you know what, I'm going to do three invites Rather than I need to spend an hour inviting, I need to send three invites. Because when you say, and language is so important, when you say, I'm going to go into the office or I'm going to like pull my laptop out, I'm going to get my phone out and I'm going to send three invites, that task takes exactly as long as it needs to take. If you say, I'm going to spend an hour sending invites, you will scroll social media, You'll answer a few messages, you'll touch base with people, and will take you a whole hour to send three invites, where it could have taken you three minutes, but you focused on the time, not the task. And again, these just common mistakes that we make that we actually like almost choose to be overwhelmed. So the reality is when I sit there and say, I need to create a podcast, I need to record a podcast episode, if I say, you know what, go in and spend an hour on your podcast, I'll, you know, scroll other podcasts. I'll like, oh, maybe I should update my logo. Maybe I should change this. What should I call this? Or, you know what, just go in and record your podcast. Talk about the task that you are going to do, not the time that you are going to dedicate because you're a business owner and you're a business owner with discipline. Okay. And that's like, that's just it. But you finish one task and then you move on to the next task. And you say, all right, I have sent three invites. Now I need to follow up with the three invites I sent last week. So how long is that going to take? Exactly as long as I focus on it. And especially when it comes to freedom, you know, we, we, we are blessed to enjoy a, you know, a, a great amount of freedom in our day. So the reality is I don't want to spend all day just scrolling social media because that's not freedom. It's like, you know what? You need to go and do these tasks for your business. So go and get them done and then you can enjoy the rest of the day. You know, we need to go out and actually do that. So uh, funny you should say that, right? You need some kind of measurement to track your activities. So like this is why I created the DMO checklist, right? This is why I created this and this is a free download. So if you don't have this yet, just go to my website, andrewlogan.net, and you'll see a big button saying free resources. But you'll see on here that it just says, create content, and there's only a space to tick. 
there's no space to, well, what I was thinking was, you know, blah, blah. It's like, have you done it or not? Black and white. Yes. Tick. Then I'm going to move on to the next thing. Have you posted content from that content that you created? Did you then go and post it and duplicate it onto a couple of channels? Bang. Yes. Tick. Awesome. Tick. Go through. Yes. Some people have it. Yeah. So this is how you do it. Now you'll see when we talked about right at the start, network, market, coach and support, build yourself. It's in that order too, right? So when you use this checklist, if you're using it, make sure you start at the top and work down. There's a reason it's in a certain order. It's saying, I want you to network first, then I want you to market, then I want you to support your people, then I want you to grow yourself. And I just want to tick in the box. Finish that task and then move on to it. Now, yes, it does have some sort of, you know, times on there. This should take around 10 to 20 minutes, okay? They are guides to just say, are you full-time or you part-time, okay? The reality is the point of the DMO checklist is that you just check it off, okay? You just say, you know what, I've done this task and I've got to check it off because I'm not going to sit there and say, I'm going to spend an hour on my attraction marketing. I'm just going to work through those four tasks. And if it takes you 14 minutes, you just created 46 minutes in your day because you gave yourself an hour to do something that only needed to take 14 minutes. So you just created 46 more minutes because you were focused and you're disciplined. Now, again, if you've got this, there's some information on the back as well. You also get this, okay, the blueprint that actually like takes you through all the scripts and templates and tools and all that kind of stuff. So if you haven't got that yet, make sure you download that because um, it's going to give you all that information and help you stay on track with scripts and templates, etc. But the reality of that is that you go through it and you tick it and you say, you know what, I'm going to get these tasks done and the sooner I get it done, the sooner I get to enjoy my free time. The sooner I get to go out there and just enjoy the day and go out or enjoy whatever it is, you know, enjoy time with the kids, enjoy producing activities, go out, tick that box, move on. If you don't finish that task, if you focus on the time, all that kind of stuff, again, your business can't grow. And that's a discipline. And again, this is one of the, you know, the great paradoxes at the end of the day is that discipline, you know, is what leads to success. Successful athletes are very disciplined in their diet, in their training, in their recovery. You know, disciplined athletes don't go to the gym and then like, oh, I, I can enjoy a cream bun now because I just went to the gym. Like they're straight into their recovery. They're straight into their protein window, their nutrition plan. People who are financially free are very disciplined with their budget. They're very disciplined with where their money goes each week, but that discipline gives them the freedom. So great network marketers, great people with a lot of time are very disciplined with their time. That's one of the greatest paradoxes out there. If you want time freedom, you have to be disciplined with your time. You have to have that discipline to stay on track. Because if you don't run your day, other people will run it for you. If you don't say, this is my schedule and this is what I'm doing and these are the important things and I'm going to run my day and I'm going to schedule my day with important tasks first, other people will just come in and they'll start running your day for you. They'll find a way to run your day for you if you don't have that discipline. So if you want money, have a budget. If you want a great body, have a plan. If you want time freedom, have a plan and stick to it. Okay, last little thing as we come to the end. I, I thought, yeah, it'd be sort of 60 to 90 minutes. So we're right at that sort of 75 minute mark. Last little thing. And I just want to talk about one of the traps to avoid. So um, is anyone on here like full time? Like you, you're at a point where you're full time building your business or are you kind of still in the early stages, hustling, building, you know, part time, casual, getting your business off the ground? Who's full time? Um, and who's part-time in their growth. Yes, so we've got a couple of people full-time. It's awesome. Early stages, yep, yep, full-time, full-time, early stages. Cool, so we've got a mix of both. Okay, so again, super quick. I'm just going to hit this super quick because I want to respect your time, but we have... A beautiful thing in this business called leverage. Leverage is the greatest thing that we do in this business. So I can, thanks to social media particularly, 
I can run a team of hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands with leverage. So I can have 10,000 people in my team, but I don't need to individually message them all. I don't need to email them all, you know, hey guys, there's an event this weekend. I can just do a post in our Facebook group. I can do a Zoom call. I don't have to share my story to every single person I meet because I can do a reel or a Facebook live or I can have like, you know, my story highlights where I'm like, hey, I just want to share my story. Boom, boom, boom. And anyone who comes to my social media sees my story highlights. That's leverage, right? I don't have to tell my story a thousand times a day. I can just tell my story once and then hope, you know, when a thousand people come past my social media, they see my story, right? That's leverage. That's incredible. And again, that's how we create a great amount of income because we can have a team of a, a thousand, ten thousand, a hundred thousand people, and we post something in the group, and a thousand people see it and they purchase great amounts of leverage. Here's the problem when you go full time. So, if you aren't full time yet, be aware of this because we see it happen all the time. This is like a, a lifestyle inflation, a lifestyle creep setup kind of thing where we so these bad habits creep into our life. Leverage also works the other way. Okay. So once you're full time, it's very easy to fall into these perfectionist, people pleasing traps. And it's very easy to start, you know what, I'm going to have the day off, you know what, the boss gave me the day off, the boss said I could go to the beach. Okay, I need to create social media content. So what I might do is I might just go meditate on the beach first. And you know, like, I'll get a beautiful photo, and then I'll Google great quotes. And again, suddenly you spend three to four hours on the perfect post. There's nothing wrong with getting up and, you know, exercising, seeing the sunset, meditating, having some personal time, right? It's just don't write it off as like four hours of your business just to get <laughs> that beautiful post, right? The reality is we can start to fall into these bad time habits. And the problem is, is that those bad time habits will duplicate. Everything you do, good and bad, will duplicate. So we talked about it right at the start. If you have bad time management, you will fall to the level of your bad time management. So you might be able to get your business to a point, but then if you let these little bad habits creep back in, your business will fall to the level of your bad habits because people will duplicate you. So people who are early days and hustling and only have five hours a week to build their business and they see you spend four hours a week on your content creation, that means they're spending four hours a week just on their social media. They've only got an hour a week to do everything else. They've got an hour a week to talk, invite, network, grow themselves, build belief, all that kind of stuff, right? So we need to, again, show that discipline because everything we do will leverage and duplicate. And one of the biggest things that we see is especially with Zoom calls. Now, you know, this world has, you know, obviously been a lot of challenges in the last two years and we're, we're a bit dependent on Zoom calls and all that kind of stuff. But we can fall into the trap of just doing Zoom call for the sake of doing a Zoom call. And I'm just using Zoom calls as one example. There's lots of other things we do. But if you have 100 people on your Zoom call, that's amazing. That's incredible leverage for you. But if there's no point to the Zoom call, if the Zoom call is just for the sake of having a Zoom call, you took a hundred people out of your business and gave them nothing to do for an hour. So like, let's talk about, you know, like, again, like as a business owner, you get paid on production, you get paid on the work, you get paid on like, you know, the actual sales that are made. And you took a hundred of your top sales people out and put them in a room and just, you know, they didn't really do anything. So have a Zoom call if there's an intention to the Zoom call. Have a Zoom call because you've got a great trainer on, you know, someone's coming in to do a guest speak, you're going to pass on what you've learned from this lesson or something like that, right? But just remember that if you're doing stuff for the sake of doing stuff, if you're ill-disciplined with your time, but it's okay because I'm full-time, I can, you know, I can be a bit looser and lax with my time, that duplicates out. And that means everyone on your team is not working for those hours as well. And that leverages and duplicates. So when I had my, you know, my traditional business, my physio practice, physios are quite expensive. <laughs> you know, uh, they're, they're pretty expensive to hire, um, and, you know, which is great if you're a physio because it means it's a, it's a decent earning job. As a business to pay for it, to have physios there, you know, you've got to keep them busy. 
um, because you can't really pay them to just sit around because they're, they're, not, they're not the cheapest people to pay in the world. So when we had like staff meetings, if a staff meeting went for an hour, I had to take all these physios out of the workplace and pay them to sit there and listen to the staff meeting. So that cost me a significant amount of money. So there was only going to be a staff meeting if there was a significant amount of value because I cost myself this much money to pull staff out of the workplace and stop them actually treating patients and generating income. Now, it's the same in this business. It's the same in any business. Anything where you're taking people out of income-producing activities, you are costing your business money. Now, if it's an investment, if it's a great training, if it's a great speaker, if there's something specifically you're going to plan for the next event, you're planning for the next blitz, all that kind of stuff, 100%. Do it, of course. Use leverage to your advantage. But leverage can also go wrong. Leverage can go the wrong way and you can leverage incorrectly. And if you leverage poor time management habits, then your team will develop poor time management habits and they will spend their time on non-income producing activities. So if you have your team spending like 80% of their time on the you know, bad income producing activities, again, if you have, they're spending 80% of their time up in here or they're spending 80% of their time down in here, it's really hard for your business to grow because it can't grow if it's 80% inefficient. If 80% of the time is on non-income producing activities, your business can't grow. So it's as simple as that, but it's about discipline. And again, the more time you have, the more disciplined you need to be with your time management. That's just a reality. The more time you have, the more time you need to be disciplined with your time management, because if you're not disciplined, your team won't be disciplined as well. And then that's when, unfortunately, we see a lot of people, as soon as they hit full time, their business just grinds to a halt and they just hit this wall that they can't get through. And then eventually it sort of comes back and back and back. And eventually they, you know, had to go back to work. Network marketing didn't work. And they, they hold on to these bad stories. It's like, no, just your time management was the roadblock that didn't allow you to grow the next level. So that is it for the training today. We talked about task prioritization. We talked about the balance myth. We talked about how to make sure that we're disciplined. Understand that you need to set good habits and you need to demonstrate good habits. A lot of leadership and time management are very similar conversations, very similar mindsets, making sure that everything you do is about showing people that you're raising the lid because if you lower yourself down, your business can will fall to the level of your leadership and time management skills. So guys, super quick before we go, um, I just, I'd love to hear your uh, feedback. I'd love to hear, you know, like what's your big light bulb moment. I'd love to hear like, what are the things that you're going to give up? What are some of the old mindsets or things that you're going to give up? Just while you're doing that, we do have coming up in June 13, we've got boom in June. So this is a five day business launch blitz, business launch blitz event. So if you go to andrewlogan.net slash boom, you'll find all the details there. We're going to run through exactly how to launch your business, the scripts you need. So you're never not worrying what to talk about, how to you know invite, finding people who are going to be interested directly or indirectly, knowing who to reach out to and how. We're going to cover duplication. We're going to cover follow-up objections. So you're not, you know, getting these crushing objections or you're not feeling like a weirdo or annoying uh, by, you know, following up with people when they don't want to be followed up with. So that is the next event coming up. So boom in June. There's also something really cool coming up in May at the end of May, okay, um, in about three weeks time. So I'm not going to talk about it now. Keep an eye out uh, on, um, you know, in the Facebook group and stuff like that. Keep an eye out on the announcement. There's a really big announcement coming up at the end of May. Um, but otherwise, the next event is that boom in June. So yeah, discipline. Yeah, it's all about discipline, like discipline in everything we do. If you want a great body, it's discipline. If you want financial freedom, it's discipline. And if you want time freedom, okay, because there's no point just making money if you don't have time, okay? And we talk about that all the time. If you're just making money but not have time, then you have a job. If you want wealth and freedom, you need to have the discipline with your time. 
So balance time management, yep, sacrifices, yep, you're, you're doing that. Focus on the task, not the time. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Bad, bad time habits duplicate, yep. Your team will do everything you do. Uh, and that is the price of leadership, guys. So, I mean, you make a lot of money and you can have a great life with leadership, um, but there is a cost. There is a cost to that freedom. And that cost is just that we need to make sure that we show up um, correctly every day and showing up um, yeah, the the three P's too. Cool. Yeah, so I've done like a I've done a podcast specifically on that as well. I think there's a YouTube video as well. So if you uh, if you want to run through that as well, there's definitely a podcast and a YouTube video. There's definitely a YouTube video on the three P's: procrastination, people pleasing, and perfectionism, and just being so wary of those things. Guys, have a great weekend. Have a great Mother's Day <laughs> to some of you uh, here in Australia. Sunday morning. Now it's time for me to go down and make breakfast for my wife and do all those sorts of great things. Um, my son's playing football today as well. So Mother's Day gets to be spent on the football field. Um, yes, shopping list. Now I need to do a game of better. Oh, actually, you you reminded me to say something and I, I, I missed this right there. But if anyone's watching right to the end, you're going to get an extra special bonus thanks to what Mark and said. So these six steps, right? Think about it like a, like a shopping list, like a recipe, okay? So... You have six ingredients, but the most important thing about the recipe is the ingredients, the quantities, and the order, okay? So if I have a cup of flour and a pinch of salt, you know, it's like cup of flour, eggs, sugar, and then a pinch of salt at the end, right, in the recipe. If I have the quantities wrong, I'm not going to get the cake. So I have this beautiful recipe for a cake, and here it is. But if I get to the bottom and I'm like, put a cup of salt in and a pinch of flour, it's not going to work out, right? It's going to, it's going to be gross. It's going to be horrible. So it's the same thing with your business. Think about the ingredients, the quantities and the order. We ice the cake at the end, you know, all the fancy stuff is down the bottom, the fun events, you know, building ourselves, the personal development, a lot of this fancy stuff, a lot of the icing on the cake, a lot of the stuff that people see on our social media, we don't sit there and like, man. Like no one's ever posted like, man, I just spent six hours connecting with people and my head hurts, right? They post like, oh my goodness, I just went to this amazing event. I just read this book. I just spent some time at the beach reconnecting with myself and my goals, right? The icing on the cake, but you ice the cake after you've baked the cake. You've got to put the big fundamental flour, sugar, milk, you know, eggs, quite plain vanilla ingredients in first. Then you put it to work. Then you go and ice the cake after. Thank you for reminding me, Mark, and that was awesome. Actually, I'm going to just spin you a prize too for reminding me. So you get my leadership masterclass. So if you can send me an email, andrew at andrewlogan.net, and I will send you my leadership masterclass. Thank you for reminding me to add in that lesson. And congratulations for being right onto the end. It is always good to pop in a really great little nugget right at the end so that the people who stay right to the end and get that great value. Guys, have an amazing weekend uh, and we will see you all very, very soon. I'll see you all for the announcement in at the end of May and we'll see you for the Boom in June event uh, in June.